44, that is the number of rebel candidates that have filed nominations in Rajasthan. Remember, the state votes on November 25th. And these rebel candidates are from BJP and from the Congress. Incidentally, there are the same number of rebels from the Congress and the BJP, 22 each. In a tightly contested election that Rajasthan has always been known for, how much impact and influence will these rebel candidates have on the final outcome? That's what we're going to try and understand today. Political analyst Avinash Kalla and my colleague NDTV's consulting editor Mayank Mishra join us tonight. So a look at some of the prominent rebels, Narpat Singh Rajvi, Priyanka Chaudhary, Kalash Meghwal, and some of the prominent BJP rebels in the fray. And when you look at the Congress ones, you also have Pirendra Beniwal, Ramlal Meghwal, and others. And these are mostly MLAs who have been denied a ticket or asked to contest from a different seat. Mike, it's quite clear that both the major parties have to contend with rebellion in ranks. That's also understandable because the state is known for fierce anti-incumbency. Explain to us why does Rajasthan witness such a high rebellion every year and what is the extent of the dent that they can make? <clears throat> My reading of data, and I have analyzed data for past five elections, tells me that life of an MLA in Rajasthan is very tough. And I will, I will give you examples of that. <clears throat> Chances of him getting re-nominated is very slim. If he gets re-nominated, chances of win are very, very slim. And if he defects to another party, then again, chances of re-electing is quite low. And for each, I will give you data. <clears throat> In in far in last five elections, I have seen that fifty two hundred MLAs don't get renominated, and I am talking about both the parties, and all parties, which means one or one out of four to one out of two don't get renominated. That is pretty high number. Someone who gets renominated, chances of him getting elected again is forty percent, which means. 4 out of 10 recontesting MLAs get re-elected. Re and some, if somebody defects, then chances of him getting <coughs> re-elected is 20%. So, 1 out of 5. So, in all cases, we see fierce anti-incumbency at all levels, not just against parties, but against individual candidate also. Right. So you can also see visuals of Amit Shah doing a road show in Jabalpur today. A uh, short while ago, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on a road show in Indore. Uh, so this is the last leg of campaign in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, going back to our discussion, Mr. Kalla, that's uh, what Mayank was saying is interesting about incumbents. Is it because of the factionalism that we see both in the ranks of the BJP and Congress that uh, you also see the number of rebel candidates going up? It certainly is. It is. And ever since the last election, the phenomenon of rebellion has gone up. And I'll tell you with the Congress party first. In the last elections, there were close to 18 people who were Congress candidates originally, but they did not uh, get the ticket. Uh, they were Gallo supporters. They contested independently. And this time, they are on the Congress symbol back into picture. So the people who were predominantly in those areas had no other choice but to rebel. So the official candidates moved out. And secondly, BJP, the number of rebellion is surprising this time around. And despite all the efforts being made by the uh, top brass, they could not get those rebellions back into the fold. This is something that has not been associated with the BJP. But when we uh, spoke to some people who were rebels, they said that the party has set a precedent that this time around, in the first list which came out in which the party experimented a lot, with 29 new faces, most of the people who contested independently or on a small regional party or on another party's ticket and made sure that the BJP was pushed down to number three or number four were given prominence over BJP leaders. So many people in the phrase say that fair enough, we did not get a chance this time or symbol. Our ideology remains intact for the BJP, but we will contest and make sure that our vote is counted. So that next time around, we can be taken in. So this is something which has uniquely happened with the BJP. And last time around, the independents gave a lot of cushion to Ashok Gelot when the rebellion within the party happened. So uh, this time around, with no particular face in the BJP, many people are fancying their chances as independents that if in a scenario, it's a close contest between the two parties, they can make their head count. So resistance 
is still there they want to be there and they want to make sure that they are counted in the end right so more than resistance it's also a story of political aspiration so my case rebellion unique Absolutely. to rajasthan and uh, like mr kala was saying that it's also a sign that political aspirations are spreading and more people want to join the election fray and uh, even if denied tickets from the respective parties and let me tell you it is not unique to rajasthan alone and i looked at data of swing states and i will um, i looked at data of tamil nadu kerala himachal uttarakhand and these are all the states where power changes every 5 years mostly um, there we have seen some exceptions kerala was an exception tamil nadu was an exception but by and large in uttarakhand also was an exception but in most cases there is a change every 5 years and we have seen the same situation in rajasthan also <coughs> tamil nadu is the only state where chances of a first time winning election is higher than rajasthan <coughs> first time winner means you are contesting for the first time and you replace many incumbents rajasthan tamil nadu has 60% first time mlas and that that has been the average for last 5 6 elections uttarakhand has 40% such cases 40 Himachal is just 35 and Rajasthan is close to 50% which means <coughs> nearly 100 of 200 MLAs are newcomers in Rajasthan only Tamil Nadu has higher number of <coughs> fresh faces with regard to incumbents Rajasthan once again is second only to Tamil Nadu and higher than Kerala Himachal Uttarakhand so in these two aspects we see that <coughs> new comers are preferred and in terms of defection and all these states all these swing states see a lot of defection since there is a lot many candidates are denied tickets many incumbents are denied ticket because um, anti incumbency remains very high in these states <coughs> in terms of electability of income defectors Rajasthan is on the higher side and all others are <coughs> on the lower side which means chances of defector getting elected is quite low in Rajasthan compared to other swing states right so the newcomers actually have a better chance that is the sense that i'm getting right yes. so uh, mr kala so is rebellion would you see is a be- bigger factor than smaller parties in rajasthan and would you say any particular region of rajasthan being more vulnerable to this phenomenon because and how are parties looking at it because i remember both in karnataka and himachal pradesh rebels did cause a lot of dent for the bjp see uh, when it comes to small parties rajasthan doesn't have too many smaller parties there is only one rmp that is a home grown local party uh, and last uh, these defectors then move on to parties like rnp or an uh, aam aadmi party this time around and they get a ticket baspa used to be a beneficiary of these tickets every time the six bsp mlas who have been a uh, part of the government were uh, coming from congress they were predominantly congress people who would not get a seat there go to bsp get elected come back so there are smaller pockets like shekhavati or udaipurwati where you have this guy who comes out with the red dye the uh, uh, rajender singh guda that is an area that is susceptible to throw these people nagore and western rajasthan again is an area where you have people from rnp who come and get elected so these are smaller little bits uh, there is no great party as such uh, in 2008 election if i remember it correctly there were 21 rebels who contested uh, against the bjp out of which 18 won and they were the biggest deciding factors between uh, the win and loss of asindra raje government in 2008 and they all were mostly from the eastern rajasthan so every election these people keep on changing they depend mostly on caste or a regional powerful leader who has a dominance in that area if he or she is not getting a representation then they move so the 2008 example that i quoted yeah. it was uh, kirodi lal meena who is now contesting on a bjp ticket from savai madhopur he was not happy with rasindra raje he broke out and he formed an alliance with uh, late late mr sangma and that party contested close to 23 seats where 21 were uh, kirodi lal's rebel and they won 
similar was the case with RLP last time. There were 58 candidates who contested, three won, and in 23 they were number three. But all these number three seats costed 17 to BJP and six to Congress. So they are bigger spoils for. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kala, for that wonderful point and thank you for all those uh, insights. So that was a panel of experts on the kind of dent and uh, impact that rebel candidates can make on the outcomes of results in Rajasthan. Remember, the problem of rebel candidates is a challenge that both BJP and Congress face in the state. That's all the time we have for you in the Battle for States. Uh, but before that, let's also see some visuals of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's mega roadshow in Indore. Uh, Remember, this is the last leg of Madhya Pradesh's uh, campaign. Uh, the state is all set to vote on Friday. The campaign ends uh, tomorrow. So this is Prime Minister's mega push in Indore. Remember, Indore is also uh, a seat where one of uh, BJP's powerful general secretaries, Kalash Vijayvargya, is contesting from. So that is B.D. Sharma along with uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in, in the car. And he is also the president of BJP in Madhya Pradesh. We also spoke to T.S. Steu, who is the Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh a short while ago. Let's listen to what he had to say.